All right, so we're in section 15.8. So when we talked about when we talked about Green's theorem, we came up with a uh, we we derived an expression for the the tangential tangential vector version of Green's theorem. So we said that we could we could write Green's theorem as if we our line integral around our closed curve of f dot dr. So this is the tangential, we're summing the tangential component of f around our, around our curve. We, we interpreted f dot dr as the, as the work done by this, this force moving a particle around this, this curve. So that's summing the tangential component of f times our little uh, element of length. And we said that we could also write that using Green's theorem as the double integral over the region enclosed by C of del cross F dot k hat dA. So that was equal to the vertical component of the curl of F over the region enclosed by the curve. So we said there was some connection between the curl of our of our field and the tangential component around the around the boundary. So we're going to Stokes theorem extends this idea to a three-dimensional three-dimensional surface. So we could think of this this DA, this region in the in the XY plane as just a flat surface. And this is the line integral around the boundary of that flat surface. We're going to extend this to three dimensions, and that's what that's what Stokes' theorem actually does, is extend this idea to three dimensions. So Stokes' theorem says <coughs> Stokes' theorem says that our line integral around a closed curve f dot dr is the double integral over our surface of the curl of f dot n ds. So our line integral around the boundary of our field is equal to the surface integral of the curl over the surface. And remember this, we're the surface integral, we said we were finding the normal component of our field. So we're summing the normal component of the curl, del cross f dot n, over our surface. And that is equal to the tangential component of f around the boundary of this surface. So we're going to say for Stokes' theorem, s is an oriented surface. And it's bounded by by C, and n is our unit normal vector. And I guess I should say the outward unit normal vector. So again, the sum of the tangential component of f around the boundary of our surface is equal to the sum of the normal component of the curl over the surface. So the curl is telling us something about 
what's going on around the boundary of this around this curve. So we use Stokes theorem. We use Stokes theorem in two ways. One one way is a primary way, but um, we're going to use it in two ways. One, we're going to we want to simplify a complicated line integral. by turning it into a surface integral. So this is kind of the three-dimensional version of how we use Green's theorem. Green's theorem, we, we wanted to simplify a, a complicated line integral in the plane by turning it into a double integral over a region in the plane. And the second way we can use Stokes' theorem uh, is to simplify a complicated surface integral and the, the, only, the only hitch to this part is of the curl. So we're integrating a complicated surface integral of the curl by turning into a line integral. So this, this first one is the way that we, we're going to use, you're going to use Stokes theorem most often, is we want to, we want to simplify a complicated line integral by turning it into a surface integral. So we, we, and notice that, let me go back here really quickly. The surface can be any surface where C is its boundary. So we can pick, we can pick the surface. We don't have to be given a surface, we can pick the surface. So that's a nice thing. As long as C, as long as our curve is the boundary of the surface. <coughs> All right. So questions, questions so far. We're not going to, we're not going to prove, we're not going to prove Stokes theorem. It's, it's very similar to what we did with our tangential component of Green's theorem in the plane. It just, we have to consider more, more cases. It's a, it's a little more, a little more involved to prove, but it's the same, it's the same idea. All right. So let's. What I want to do is, is do a couple of examples of calculating with Stokes theorem. Show a couple of ways that we, that we might use it, and then we are going to. Um, come up with use Stokes theorem to give us a physical interpretation of the curl. So for this first one we want to we want to verify verify Stokes theorem for this field F is minus y plus z i hat plus x minus z j hat plus x minus y k hat and s our surface is z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared and z greater than or equal to zero. Those problems asking us to verify Stokes theorem, so we want to show, what it's asking us to do is show that the line integral around our curve of f dot dr equals the double integral over s of del cross f and our surface integral, ds. So we want to show that these two quantities are equal. So we need we need to do a couple of things. We we have our surface. We need to find we need to find our curve c that's the boundary of this of this surface. So let's draw a quick sketch of the surface. So what is the surface?
4 minus x squared minus y squared. Paraboloid. So it's going to be a paraboloid that looks like this. So this is the this is the surface in the first octant. And this is z equals 4. And in the plane, when z equals 0, we're talking about z is greater than or equal to 0, so we're up here above the xy plane. Um, so in the xy plane, this curve is going to be <coughs> x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that's our, that's our curve that's the boundary of the surface, is c. So that's going to be our c in our line integral, the circle in the xy plane. So let's do our line integral first. So for our line integral, this is our this is our curve C. So C is x squared plus y squared equals four. So to do our line integral, um, and the other thing to remember here is on the boundary z equals 0. On this curve, z equals 0. So what do we need to do for our line integral, this f dot dr? What is dr? We have to have, we have, to have some kind of expression, uh, dr, that we can form a dot product with with f, so what do we have to do for d? What do we have to do to get our dr? We have to parameterize our curve. We have to parameterize c. So it would be a parameterization for c. Rt equals parameterization of the circle. R cosine theta, so it's going to be 2 cosine t i hats plus 2 sine t j hat. So when we're talking about line integrals our, for our curve, we always have to parameterize our curve. That's always our first step for, for any line integral is parameterize our curve. Uh, and this is going to be, uh, and we have a zero j hat. And for our for dr, dr is r prime dt. So r prime is going to be minus 2 sine t i hat plus 2 cosine t j hat. And then we need to express f in terms of our parameters for our curve. So f in terms of these parameters, f of t is going to be, and z equals 0, so all of these z's that are in here are going to be, these two z's are going to be 0, so that makes our lives a little easier. So we get a minus 2 sine t i hat uh, plus 2 cosine t j hat um, plus 2 cosine t minus sine t minus 2 sine t k hat. So I'm just substituting in here. And then for our line integral, we need f dot dr. So we'll make our dot product f dot dr is f dot r prime dt. So we get a 4 sine squared t plus 4 cosine squared t. And we have a no z component here for r prime, so we don't have to worry about this z component here. And f dot dr equals what? Well, that's not bad. So our line integral, we have the line integral around our curve, f dot dr, equals the integral from, and t is varying on this circle from 0 to 2 pi. Of 4. dt, and we 
get eat pie. So now we need to show that this surface integral also evaluates to 8 pi as well. So we, we're going to find our, we need to find our evaluator surface, surface integral, del cross f dot n ds. So we need to, we need to go through the process of evaluating that surface integral. So let's, let's work on that part. Um, so questions, questions on the line integral. Okay, then not, not a bad line integral. Nice circle, our field turned out nice with our parameterization. All right, so let's look at our surface integral. So we need to evaluate del cross f dot n ds. So that's what we need to tackle next. So let's find our cross product or our, our curl of f. So del cross f, we'll do this determinant. And we have a minus y, uh, y plus z, x minus z here, and an x minus y. And when we evaluate this this determinant, we end up these are these partial derivatives turn out very nice. We end up with just a two k hat. And now we need to write for the surface for our for our, to, to evaluate our surface integral, we need our, our nor, unit normal vector. So we need to write g of xyz. So for this surface, our g of xyz is going to be is going to be what? <coughs> we said g of x, y, z is z minus f of x, y. So we're going to have a z minus 4 minus um, let's see, z minus 4 minus um, x squared minus y squared. So we end up with a, a z <coughs> plus x squared plus y squared minus 4. And we need, so our normal vector is given by del g. So del g is going to be 2x i hat plus 2y j hat plus K hat. So our, our unit normal vector on the surface. So then our integrand is going to be del cross f dot del g. And when we form that dot product, we just get two for our k component. So we're integrating um, for our surface integral. The double integral, our surface integral is the double integral over our region in the xy plane of two dA, which is two times the area of the region, which is eight pi. So we verified Stokes' theorem for this for this particular surface. So our line integral and our surface integral give us the same give us the same thing. All right, questions on evaluating that surface integral. All right, so let's look at a situation where Stokes' theorem 
where Soak Serum comes in very handy for simplifying what would what would otherwise be a, a, a complicated a complicated integral. So let's say we have uh, we want to use Stokes theorem. find um, this line integral of f dot dr where f is given by xyz i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat Um, and we're going to say that uh, S, our surface, is Z equals X squared over X squared plus Y squared equals A squared in the first octave. Yes. Uh, what is the first one? Uh, that X, Y, Z, or? Oh yes, this should okay. be X, Y, Z. So this is our field. This is our surface. Z equals X squared over X squared plus Y squared equals A squared in the first octant. And C. is the curve of intersection of z equals x squared, y equals 0, and z equals 0, and x squared plus y squared equals a squared in the first octave. So this is this the setup looks kind of kind of intimidating. So we have this field, we have our surface, this curve of intersection, so we need to one, we need to figure out what our what surface we're talking about. Um, and then we need to figure out what our curve of intersection is. So let's let's start by trying to draw draw a little sketch here of our of our situation. What is what kind of surface is z equals x squared? Uh, it has to do with a parabola. Let's be a little more a little more specific. We're missing one one of the one of the coordinates. So we have what does that tell us about our surface? <coughs> What's that? We have a cylinder. So we have a parabolic cylinder. So in the X Z plane, we have a parabola. And it's going to move, it's going to be along the Y axis here. So this is a parabolic cylinder. So there's our surface z equals x squared. And it's over x squared plus y squared equals a squared in the first octant. So it's over this circle in the first octant. And this, sorry, not a, not a circle, this is a cylinder. This is a cylinder in the first octant. So this is going to come up like so and intersect our surface. So this is a cylinder in the first octave. So here's my cylinder. So our curve of intersection of z equals x squared, y equals 0, z equals 0. Well, what we're talking about is here is y equals 0. 
we're on uh, y equals zero along here. So we're talking about this curve that comes along the side of this parabolic cylinder. Let me do that in red. So here's where y equals zero along here. Here's where z equals zero along here. And then the cylinder is going to intersect, the two cylinders are going to intersect in a curve that goes along the surface of this cylinder like so. This would be a curve along that cylinder. So our curve of intersection, our line integral, would be along this curve. So we'd have to evaluate our line integral along this curve, along the y-axis here, up z equals x squared along here, and then down along this curve of intersection between z equals x squared and x squared plus y squared equals a squared along the surface. So in order to, in order to evaluate this line integral directly, we would have to do three line integrals. One along the y-axis here, one up along z equals x squared, and then we would have to parameterize the curve of intersection of z equals x squared and x squared plus y squared equals a squared along here to evaluate our line integral. We have to do three separate line integrals, and this third one could, could be a little, a little complicated. So, our, so to use Stokes' theorem, all we're doing is looking at the surface integral. This will be our surface, and this will be our, um, and this will be our, our boundary. So our boundary of our surface, and this is our boundary in the xy plane. So this is the the bounds of that surface. So let's find our cross product, del cross f, our curl. <coughs> So our curl of our field, we have an x, y, z here. We have a y, and we have a z. And this evaluates to, when we evaluate this curl, we get um, x, y, j hat minus x, z, k hat. And our surface. Here our surface is z equals x squared, so g for our surface. Is z minus x squared. And del g, our normal vector for our surface integral, is going to be minus 2x i hat plus k hat. And this gives us our upward unit normal vector on our surface. So then we, then we form our dot product, so del cross f. Our integrand is going to be del cross f dot del g. And when we form our dot product, we end up with a um, minus xz. And on the surface, z equals x squared, so we get minus x cubed, because z equals x squared. So our integrand is, is going to be minus x cubed, and we're, we're evaluating the surface integral over the curve that bounds this surface in the xy plane. So the curve that bounds our surface in the xy plane is this circle. So that's a boundary of the surface in the xy plane. We're just projecting that down. So we have the circle in the xy plane. So what, what are we going to use to evaluate our, our integral? 
What does that suggest since our region is a circle? Polar, we'll use polar coordinates. And our integrand is minus x cubed. So, so our integral, f dot dr by Stokes' theorem, is the double integral over our region in the xy plane of minus x cubed dA. And our region is x squared plus y squared equals a squared. So we're going to use polar. So we have the integral from, and we're in the first octant, so 0 to pi over 2. Our radius varies from 0 to a. And x cubed, minus x cubed is minus r cubed cosine cubed theta, r dr d theta. So when we evaluate this integral, 0 to pi over 2, we end up with an r, negative r to the fourth, so we end up with a minus r to the fifth over 5. Evaluated on 0 to a, and then we have a cosine cubed theta d theta. So we end up with a minus a to the fifth over 5 out of this first integral. And how are we going to evaluate this cosine cubed integral? We did one of, these, one of these just the other day. I'm going to separate out a cosine squared and write it as 1 minus sine squared theta. So we get a 1 minus sine squared theta times a cosine theta d theta. And then we have a u sub. We have an integral, a cosine theta integral, and a minus sine squared theta, cosine squared, cosine theta d theta. So that second in integral just becomes a u sub. So we end up with, uh, for we end up with a minus a to the fifth over 5, and we have a cosine theta integral, so we end up with a sine theta, and then we have a minus sine squared theta cosine theta, so we end up with a minus sine to the third theta over 3 on 0 to pi over 2, and that comes from the minus sine squared theta cosine theta integral. And when we evaluate this, we end up with a 2a to the fifth over 15. So Stokes' theorem in this case, Stokes' theorem allows us to go from three line integrals, which possibly could be difficult, the one along the y-axis, probably not too bad. This one might not be easy. The one along this surface, we'd have to parameterize that surface and uh, write our field in terms of our parameters to, to evaluate that third line integral. Um, but Stokes' theorem allows us to just use this easy surface, z equals x squared, and so, some curve that bounds that surface. Well, our curve that bounds the surface is this uh, circle in the xy plane. and we end up with a not, not terribly difficult uh, integral in polar coordinates. Questions there? <coughs> okay, um, physical interpretation of the curl, finally. Now we can use Stokes' theorem to give us an interpretation of the curl.
So we have an idea of the curl, and we've talked about this since the very beginning of the chapter. The curl having to do with our field causing some kind of some some kind of rotation. Um, so from Stokes' theorem, we're going to start with Stokes' theorem to get our interpretation. And this is going to kind of follow along with what we did with the divergence theorem. Stokes' theorem says that our line integral around our closed curve of f dot dr equals a double integral over our surface, our surface integral of del cross f dot n ds. This line integral, the line integral around our closed curve of f dot dr, we call that the circulation of our field. We said we could think of that as the sum of the tangential components around this boundary. So we call that the circulation of the field. So what Stokes' theorem says is the circulation equals this double integral. So if we, if we just consider a very, very, very small piece of this surface, where we're evaluating the surface center, we're going to consider just a very small piece, a very tiny, tiny piece of DS, the little surface. Um, we can say that our field is essentially, it's small enough that our field is essentially constant over that, over that little piece of surface. So our curl, this, this quantity del cross f dot n, on that tiny little piece of surface is going to be constant. So we can say the circulation, so for a very small So for, for a very small surface, our circulation is going to be just del cross f dot n times the double integral over s of ds. So our field is constant, so our curl over that tiny little piece of surface is essentially constant. And I should say approximately equal here. And the double integral of ds is just the area of that tiny little piece of surface. surface. So I'm going to divide both sides by that tiny, tiny little piece of area. So the circulation divided by the area of that tiny little piece of surface is approximately equal to the normal component of the curl. And as our area gets smaller and smaller in the limit, as the area approaches zero, we can say that our circulation equals del cross f dot n, so in the limit. So as our area approaches zero, we take this limit, and we say that our circulation equals the normal component of our curl at that point. So our circulation, the curl, the curl, the normal component of the curl tells us the tendency of the field to circulate about a point. And I, I guess I should say about uh, the normal vector at a point. So 
So the curl, the normal component of the curl, tells us the tendency of the field to circulate about the normal, the normal vector at a point. So the curl is the tendency of our field to circulate. So finally, finally we get a, a, a physical interpretation, physical interpretation of the curl. So our divergence tells us the flux per unit volume at a particular point, the tendency of the field to flow outward or inward towards it, away from or towards that point. And our curl tells us the tendency of the field to circulate about that point. All right, and the last thing that I want to say about chapter 15 is that a lot of the things that we've talked about, the fundamental theorem of line integrals, Green's theorem, divergence theorem, and Stokes theorem are generalized versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental theorem of line integrals, that came directly from the fundamental theorem of calculus. But Green's theorem tells us that the line integral around the boundary is the double integral in the region. So the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the integral of a function over an interval is the antiderivative of the functions, function evaluated at the endpoints. So we're talking about something on the interior of this interval and the endpoints of the interval. Well, Green's theorem is telling us we have this quantity on the interior of a region, and to evaluate that quantity, if we think of the double integral as talking about the interior of the region, Green's theorem tells us that we can evaluate the line integral around the boundary, so a related quantity to our integrand around the boundary. So Green's theorem is, is a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It tells us something about the interior of this region, to evaluate this quantity on the interior of the region, we evaluate a related quantity on the boundary of the region. It's exactly what the divergence theorem is telling us as well. The, the flux over our surface is related to the triple integral of the, of the solid. So this, this quantity in the solid, this flux in the solid, the divergence in the solid, to find that, we evaluate a related quantity on the surface, on the boundary of that region. And then with Stokes' theorem, we have a line integral around the boundary of this surface. So the surface, we're, we're talking about the, the flux, the, or sorry, the, the curl <coughs> over our surface. To find this curl over our surface, we evaluate a related quantity on the boundary of the surface. So all of these are generalizations of the fundamental theorem of calculus. They all follow from that idea of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So they're all really part of one big idea that comes from the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's that it's the idea of the fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluating your integral by doing your antiderivative at the endpoints, generalizes into these very, very powerful ideas in three dimensions. And all of this stuff that we've been talking about in chapter 15 is really um, developed during during the time when electromagnetism was first first developing and Maxwell's equations, the basic equations of electromagnetism, all have this the language of these these integrals that we've been talking about. You can express Maxwell's Maxwell's equations in, in an integral form and you end up with the divergence theorem, you end up with Stokes theorem, you end up with Green theorem if you're talking about in the plane. So there are, all of these things are, are really closely related and they really kind of speak to the, I think that the idea that the fundamental theorem of calculus is very, is, is a good name for it because it's so fundamental to what we end up doing with a lot of different things other than just evaluating integrals. So, questions? All right. Homework. There we go.